Hello everyone, welcome back to Code Together. I'm Rami and today we're diving into React, one of the most popular JavaScript libraries for building modern web apps. Whether you're brand new to React or just want a solid refresher, this video will get you started with the essentials. All right, first things first. What exactly is React? It is what it is. React is a JavaScript library developed by Facebook that helps you build user interfaces by breaking them down into small, reusable pieces called components. Imagine building with Lego blocks. Each block is a component and you can combine them to build complex UIs quickly and efficiently. One of the coolest things about React is DSX, a syntax that lets you write HTML-I code directly inside your JavaScript. This makes your code easier to read and write. React also uses a virtual DOM, which means it updates only the parts of the page that change, making your app super fast and smooth. <laughs> yeah, boy. Before we jump in, make sure you're comfortable with JavaScript basics and HTML. Those will make learning React much easier. Let's get your React environment ready. Download and install Node.js from Node.js.org. Node comes with NPM, the package manager will use to install React. Next, open your favorite code editor. I recommend Visual Studio Code, it's free and packed with great features. Create a new folder for your project, I'll call mine My React App, for example. Open your terminal or code prompt, navigate through your project folder, and run this command to create a new React app using Vi, which is a fast modern build tool. For the project name, it's a convention to name it My React App, which is the same name that I gave to my folder, so I'm just going to do the same. Then we're going to choose a framework, we're going to choose React. By the way, React is not a framework, it's a library. Even though it says here framework, if you go to their website, their official website, you'll see that that's a library. Hit enter, then use JavaScript since we want to keep it as simple as possible and as beginner as possible, then we're just going to use JavaScript. You can use TypeScript if you're good enough with TypeScript and as you can see right here, our folder is created. The next commands that we need to run are the following three commands. CD my React app to get inside our newly created my React app folder, which contains the React project. So let's do it. So now we're inside my React app folder, and now we need to install the dependencies that we need. All right, the last command is to run the development server. Once you see this, you'll see that our web server is found at this address. Let's take a look on the React folder structure. In node models, this is where all your React packages and dependencies get installed. Things like React, React DOM, and anything else you add with npm install command. You don't need to touch this folder and you should never upload it to GitHub. That's what .gitignore is for. In the public folder, this is your static assets folder. Any file you put here won't go through Byte's build process. It's copied as is into your final build. You'll usually put things like icons, logos, or maybe a manifest.json or PWA support. For example, Vite.sfg is the logo that comes with the default Vite template. In the SRC folder, this is the main folder for your React code. Every component, every CSS file, and most of your logic will live in here. Think of it as the brain of your app. And here's a tip. Organize your components into subfolders like components, pages, or hooks as your app grows. For the .gitignore, this file tells Git what to ignore, like the node models folder or environment variables you don't want to share online. For the eslint.config.js, this file configures eslint, a tool that helps you catch errors and follow best practices while writing React code. It's super helpful for writing clean, consistent code. For the index.html, this is the main HTML file and it's where your React app gets mounted. Unlike create React app, Byte exposes this file, which gives you more flexibility if you want to tweak things like meta tags, fonts for five icons. Package lock.json. This file locks the exact versions of your dependencies to make sure that everyone who installs your project gets the same setup. You don't edit this, npm does it for you automatically. Package.json. Now this file is really important. It holds all the metadata about your project. Project name, version, script, and most importantly, your React dependencies. And here's another tip. When to start the React Dev server, that command lives in the script section here. The readme.md, this file explains your project to the world. When you upload it to GitHub, it shows up on the main page. Write what your app does, how to run it, 
and everything cool about it. Vi.config.js, this is where you customize how Vi runs. You can add aliases, plugins, or tweak the dev server. For now, the default config works great, but this file becomes powerful as your project grows. And that's the full tour of a React plus Vi project structure. I hope this helps you feel more confident working with your React app. And knowing this is very crucial to understand how React works. All right, everybody. Now let's take a look into what we have in the app.gsx file. As you can see right here, this is a small project that you will see when you run the development server, the local development server. It's a small project uh, of a counter. When you click on the button, it will add one to the counter. So let's remove wh whatever we have here in this function. This is the app component, uh, the, the function that we have for the app component. We no longer need these imports. And as you can see right here, um, this main file, it's the main uh, GSX file. And this is the app component, which is um, whatever uh, code we have in the app component, we will find it here. So we have just removed all what we had in this uh, app function and that should eliminate our sample project as you can see right here we are creating a root element and including our app component here components can have dedicated style sheets as you can see right here we are going to delete this because we no longer need it we do have an app component that's going to serve as the root we will add other components to our app component our app component ties them all together to create a new component, go to your source folder or go into right click the new file. We're going to call it header.gsx. We're going to move it to the source folder. The extension is .gsx because it's a JavaScript XML file. We will be working with function based components. We will create a function with the name of header. Then we're going to export this component default header like this within our header function we can write a combination of javascript and html xml all we're going to do within this function is to return something return parentheses semicolon within the return statement you can write pure html i will create a header element React components are only capable of returning a single element, but you can place children elements within it. Within our header element, I will create an h1 element, for example, with the text of something. Something. Just to be sure everything is working, let's save with Ctrl S if you're on Windows. We will go to our app component and we will import the header file to this file like this. This dot slash means from the same folder open header.gsx. Okay. Now we need to use our header. Inside this app component we will also be returning something which is the header statement. Now to return the header statement we have to wait. You're either going to uh, call it like this with an opening tag and a an closing tag, or you can use this syntax, which is a shorthand syntax like this, and it's going to be the same thing. Now to test this, let's run our server. NPM run this. If you encounter this problem, make sure you're in the same folder, the exact folder, which I haven't done. Now it's open. Let's check this localhost. You can copy it by using Control Shift and C, not the normal Control C because that's going to stop and get you out of the running command. Now the reason for this error is this app.css because we don't have an app.css file. So let's remove this import and we should fix this. Now it's working. It should work. And as you can see right here, <laughs> it's something. <laughs> That's it for today's video. We've successfully created our first ever component, which is the header component. If you're enjoying following along, be sure to like the video and subscribe to Code Together so you don't miss the next lessons. If you have any questions or topics you want me to cover in the upcoming videos, thanks for coding together with me today. I'm Rami, and I'll see you in the next video.